In our previous exploration, we delved into Sadi Carnot's fascination with steam engines and his quest to find if any other substance could produce more work than steam does. We also discussed the concepts of perpetual motion machines and efficiency of heat engines. Today, we'll shift our focus to James Prescott Joule, who was born in 1818 in Lancashire. We will discuss his pioneering work in challenging the prevailing notions of thermal physics. Before moving ahead, make sure to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. We have already learned that people believed in something called the caloric theory earlier, which said that heat was like an invisible liquid that could not be created or destroyed. But Joule, a keen observer, noticed something that didn't fit this idea. In his own laboratory at home, Joule saw that when he sent electricity through a wire, the wire got hot. This was a big deal because it meant electricity could do more than just spin motors, it could create heat. This observation cast doubt on the caloric theory, which asserted that heat was immutable. It could neither be created nor destroyed. If electricity could indeed produce heat, as Joule witnessed, then it was time to reassess the caloric theory. But Joule put aside the problem with the caloric theory for a while. He first wanted to find out exactly how the amount of heat that was generated related to the electric current flowing through the wire and the resistance within the wire. To figure this out, he started experimenting with something called a dynamo, which is a kind of early generator that turns mechanical work into electricity. He found that the electricity from a dynamo made a wire warm, just like electricity from a battery. Joule considered two possibilities for this phenomenon. Either heat was indeed a fluid called caloric, or the electric current itself transformed into heat within the wires. Which of these two do you think turned out to be correct? If the former was true, that is heat was indeed caloric, it would mean the dynamo was pushing this invisible heat liquid into the wire, making it warm. And in the process the dynamo would get cooler as it lost the caloric. To test this, Joule set up a clever experiment. He made a dynamo that he could turn by hand and placed part of it inside a glass tube filled with water. He thought that if the caloric theory was right, the water would get cooler as the caloric moved from the dynamo to the wire. But what happened was the opposite. The more Joule cranked the dynamo and the more electric current it produced, the hotter the water in which the coil was placed became. This result told Joule that the caloric wasn't coming from some hidden store inside the dynamo and flowing out. Instead, the action of cranking the dynamo and the flow of electricity were actually creating the heat. This led him to assert that magnetoelectricity was an agent that could generate heat through mechanical means. To be sure, Joule also made variations in the experimental setup. But he got the same result each time. The crux of all the experiments was that work, converted into electricity, then manifested as heat, suggesting that work was the root source of heat, with electricity only acting as an intermediary. Joule then wanted to know how much cranking, or work, was needed to make a certain amount of heat. He began to think that work and heat could be changed into each other, and that there was a certain exchange rate between work and heat, which he called as the mechanical equivalent of heat. To find this out, Joule used a dynamo attached to a weight that could fall. As the weight fell, it turned the dynamo, which made electricity, and then this electricity turned into heat, warming up some water. This way Joule could equate the height by which a known weight fell to the amount of heat that was generated. Joule defined a heat unit as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit and a work unit as the amount provided when a one pound weight drops by one foot. After many experiments, he was sure that there was a steady rate at which work turned into heat. All of this led Joule to a big idea. Electricity, work, and heat were all different forms of something that couldn't be seen or touched, which we now call energy. And the total amount of this invisible stuff, energy, stayed the same. It just changed from one form to another. But Joule didn't stop there. He wanted to prove without a doubt that work could change into heat directly, without needing electricity. He knew that when you rub two things together, they get hot because of friction. So, he set up another experiment where he had a weight fall and turn a paddle in water. 
The paddles rubbing through the water made heat, and this supported his earlier finding that work could be directly converted into heat. Joule's work showed that energy is always conserved and is part of a bigger, grand design. And so we wrap up our intriguing journey into the world of James Prescott Joule and his groundbreaking experiments with heat and work. We trust that this narrative has ignited your interest and deepened your grasp of thermal physics, a truly captivating subject. If you found this video enlightening, show us some encouragement with a thumbs up, and if you're keen on delving deeper into such stimulating topics, do subscribe to our channel for more content like this. We're immensely grateful for your attention and for joining us all the way to the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.